Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Uh, since I get a lot of requests uh, where people ask about common interview topics or questions that they need to prepare for when they go for interviews, specifically for interviews uh, for service provider networks. So uh, I've decided to create this short video uh, on those topics uh, wherein I'm going to discuss uh, the top five uh, network engi engineer interview topics when uh, you have to go for a service provider interview. Uh, this, this is going to be a short video, so I'm not going to go into nitty gritty details of each and everything, uh, but I'll try and give you a comprehensive overview of important topics, technologies and questions that you can um, prepare for network engineer interviews and uh, the topics that you can be asked about in the service provider interview when you apply for jobs. So let's uh, get started and see what we have. Okay, so the first and the foremost topic that you should prepare for is BGP. Now BGP is the protocol that runs the internet. Since service provider, uh, providers, they provide internet services to their clients, so they are definitely going to run BGP and it's a very important topic uh, or a protocol that you get asked about in service provider interviews. So what topics should we cover under BGP? Let's have a look at those topics as well. The first thing that you should know about is the difference between eBGP and iBGP uh, and under eBGP you should also know about eBGP multi-hop. Uh, what is eBGP multi-hop and why do we need why do we need that? What's the advantage of implementing eBGP multi-hop? Then you should also know about the BGP split horizon rule uh, and how to counter that rule. But that we can do by uh, having full mesh connectivity for our BGP routers. Uh, you should know about these things as well. Then you should also know about BGP messages and its pairing states. Now, uh, BGP messages, for example, if you get asked about uh, the notification message in BGP, so you should be able to explain that as well. And similarly, for pairing states, you should know about uh, different pairing states that what happens when your pairing is stuck uh, in active state or is stuck at connect state in BGP neighborship relation, neighbor relationships. So you can be asked about these as well. Then you have BGP route reflectors. Uh, now this is very common. Um, this is a very common question that is asked in interviews. Uh, why are route reflectors needed in the core, and what kind of functionality do they provide? And then uh, what is the alternate option that we can use? So the alternate option is the BGP configurations, but mostly service providers they don't run configurations. They run route reflectors. So this is something that you should prepare for as well. Then last but not least, you should prepare the BGP attributes. Now BGP attributes can make the protocol very complex. And they are used mainly to influence the traffic uh, using the BGP protocol. So for example, you can be asked about the uh, BGP attribute that influences the outgoing traffic from your service provider. So uh, you can tell them that you can use local preference or even you can use weight if you have Cisco in the core. Uh, similarly, you should know about the uh, incoming traffic as well, that what attributes can be used to influence incoming traffic. Um, you can uh, use AS path depending or you can use MED uh, to, to alter incoming traffic to your um, core. So similarly, you should know about other attributes as well uh, that BGP has. Uh, and how do they influence traffic uh, within your core and uh, for traffic going out and coming back to your, to your network. So this is something that you should prepare for when you go for a service provider interview in terms of BGP. Now the next uh, protocol that you should prepare for is the IGP protocol. Now IGP protocol can be OSPF or it can be ISIS usually service providers they run both so uh, the service providers that i have worked for uh, i've seen that uh, usually the uh, isis protocol is is preferred 
but uh, OSPF is also run within the ISPs for different purposes, of course. I'm not going to go into details, uh, but both protocols are run in ISPs. So you should prepare for these, these protocols as well. Uh, you should know about the OSI addressing. Uh, because you know ISIS it doesn't use the IPv4 addressing so it's, it uses the OSI addressing you should know about that as well then you should know about the areas uh, in OSPF or the levels in I ISIS like what is the backbone area or level 2 routing and level 1 routing uh, so you should know about these things as well then you should know about the neighborship states uh, for OSPF uh, in fact, if you prepare OSP, OSPF, you can just map it to ISIS. So both are somewhat similar with different terminologies, of course. So you should know about these things as well. Then you should know about the router types like DR or BDR or, or regular router, backbone router. So you should know about these as well. Then you should also know about the packets uh, for ISIS and OSPF like DVD packet, uh, hello packet. Uh, and then uh, the main uh, and the m most important thing that you should know about is LSA, Link State Advertisement. So, you know, OSPF uh, has different types of LSAs. So this is very common, very, it's a very uh, common question that it's a very common question that you get asked about in interviews uh, that what kind of LSA or what LSA does what for OSPF. So you should know about the LSAs as well. Then you should also know about the network types, uh, about point-to-point -point network and a broadcast network, and how how do uh, the uh, routing work? Um, how does the routing work in different different network types? You should know these things as well. So uh, these two protocols you should prepare well um, if you wanna succeed in an interview for a service provider job. So we've covered BGP, we've covered IGP. So let's see what else we have. Now the next is multi multicast. Uh, now multicast is required if your service if the service provider is giving IPTV services and mostly the service providers they offer triple play services, so they are running multicast in their network as well. So for multicast, you should know about these these topics that you may get asked about in an interview. The first one is the multicast addressing. Uh, so you know that multicast uses the uh, a DT type address space uh, and you should know about uh, the specific multicast addresses that are used for multicast traffic so you should know about multicast addressing then you should know about the IGMP protocol now this is the internet gateway message messaging protocol that is used uh, for multicast uh, at layer 2 uh, you should know about IGMP snooping and concepts related to IGMP then you should know about the uh, multicast distribution trees the, the source tree and the shared tree and the differences between them then you should also know about the PIM protocol now PIM is the um, protocol that is used to carry multicast traffic and then there are different modes in uh, under this protocol one is this pass mode other one is dense mode uh, you should know about these two as well you should know about source specific multicast this is another topic that uh, is often asked in the interview uh, you should also learn rendezvous point uh, under which mode uh, we have RP and what is the purpose of, of the rendezvous point. How, how does the stream flow, the uh, uh, IPTV stream, uh, how does it flow from the rendezvous point and down to the uh, other routers that are running multicast. You should also know about any cast uh, RP. Then you may get asked about RPF, which is the reverse path forwarding. So you should prepare that as well. So um, all in all, multicast is, is a different protocol. Uh, it's a different technology that is used for uh, IPTV services specifically. So you should know about these things as well if you are going for a service provider interview because they are going to run IPTV and they're going to ask you about it. So this is uh, something that you should prepare for as well. So let's uh, get to our next topic, which is the fourth topic that I have um, listed down in this video and that is the broadband connectivity now broadband connectivity you know uh, we give uh, dsl services adsl services and we give fiber to the home services fiber to the cabinet services so we can we can give all these services uh, over the broadband connectivity uh, we can have different types of connectivity we can give a point-to-point -point, uh, ip router connectivity as well uh, but 
broadband connectivity is is a is a major uh, portion of the um, service provider core and it's a major topic that you get asked about in an interview when you go for a service provider job so in broadband you need to prepare for pvpoe which is point to point protocol over ethernet uh, you need to uh, prepare for its phases like paddy pado pad r pad s and uh, the ncp and the lcp and all those things that um, make this protocol work um, then you should also know about nat because uh, there are different types of nat that uh, we can do uh, at the cpe side so we can do multi nat you can do uh, pat you can do one to one nat so you should know all these these types of uh, natting that is done uh, for a service provider network for broadband connectivity then you should also know about cpe configurations uh, uh, you should know about how to configure a CP in a bridge mode or how to configure it in a routed mode. What's the difference between the two and uh, how, how does the traffic flow when it leaves the CP and it enters the uh, network side like access network or the core network. So you should know these things as well. Uh, if you know the access technologies uh, uh, in the service provider network like g uh, for fiber to the home or uh, you may have ATM for DSL connectivity. So that's also a, uh, also a bonus for your interview preparation. Then you should also know about the core network. Uh, in terms of broadband, you should know about the BRAS and the LNS that we have for terminating customers in the core. Uh, this is something that you get asked about as well. And then lastly, you should also prepare AAA services, which is uh, authentication authorization and accounting so these these three services uh, how do they play uh, their role in the connectivity for a customer uh, with the network uh, and then how how is the billing cycle uh, uh, run how, how how do we run the billing cycle on the triple server how do we authenticate uh, and how how does the authorization take place so these things uh, you should also know um, so overall, uh, I would say for broadband connectivity, if you know the end to end workflow from a client like a home customer who is running Internet or who is using Internet services and the end to end flow from that customer to the, to the core. If you know that uh, and you know the technologies and the devices involved um, uh, between one endpoint and the other endpoint. So I think you are good to go for broad, broadband connectivity. But broadband connectivity questions will definitely be asked uh, if you're going for a service provider interview. So um, the last topic that uh, we have, and it is also a very, very important topic, and every service provider is running that, uh, that protocol, and that is MPLS. You must have heard of it a lot. Uh, so for MPLS, uh, there are lots of things to cover, to be honest. So you should know about uh, the MPLS uh, as, as a definition of the protocol that what MPLS is. Then you should know about the router types uh, in MPLS, like what is a PE router, what is a CE router, what's a provider router. Uh, so you should know about these as well. Then you should know about the control plane and data plane differences for MPLS uh, technology. You should also be prepared for MPLS operations because uh, this is quite commonly asked in the interviews uh, about the pop operation, the push operation, uh, the swap operation. So these things you should you should prepare for as well. Um, then MPLS header. Obviously, uh, this is something that everybody everybody asks uh, in the interview. So this is also to be prepared. And then uh, you should also know about the label distribution techniques in MPLS. The most common one is the LDP, which is based on the IGP. You should also uh, know the dependencies of protocols. Like if you want to run LDP for label distribution in MPLS, you should know that it, you have to have IGP running underneath. Uh, otherwise, the label distribution table will not be formed. So these are the things that you should know about the MPLS protocol. But then uh, the very uh, common uh, services that service providers run using the MPLS protocol, they are MPLS VPNs. So you should prepare for MPLS VPNs as well. Um, I haven't been to any interview where I was not asked about MPLS VPNs. So every interview that I went, I was asked about MPLS VPNs. So this is something that you can't miss at all. 
For MPLS VPNs, you should know the difference between a layer 2 MPLS VPN and a layer 3 MPLS VPN. Then you should also know about the VPLS and pseudo wise. Now, VPLS is a, is a shared LAN uh, layer 2 VPN. Uh, pseudo wise are just point to point uh, uh, connectivity for like uh, you create an X-Connect at one end, you bind it to the other side and you create an X-Connect to the uh, on the way back to the source. So it's a point to point uh, connectivity for um, uh, getting getting traffic across the MPLS network. Then you should know about the MPBGP. Uh, MPBGP, why is it required? Uh, what uh, what uh, function does it serve in an MPLS uh, VPN? And uh, then what is BGP free core? This is another another concept that is asked in interviews. Then a very common question that you should know about RDs versus RTs. So RDs are route distinguishers, RTs are route targets. I won't go into details because uh, there, are, there are a lot of things that I can explain for these two. But what I'll do is I'll share um, the, a link for my old video that I created for RDs versus RTs. And you can watch that uh, video if you if you are interested in knowing the difference between the two. Then you should also prepare for MPLS traffic engineering. Uh, RSVP is the most common protocol that is used for MPLS traffic engineering. So you should know that what is traffic engineering, why do we need that, and what are the advantages of MPLS traffic engineering for a service provider. So um, all in all, uh, it's a, it's become quite a busy slide to be honest. But all in all, um, I think if you cover all these topics uh, under these five protocols, I would say you are uh, 80 to 90 percent you are good to go in a service provider interview. Um, in in the last of um, I mean at the end of this session I would like to give you a bonus uh, um, topic that you should prepare uh, that is not about any protocols so that is if you if you study the company before you go for the interview and if you know what kind of uh, vendor equipment they are using for example if they are using Cisco or if they are using Juniper or Huawei so it's good that you study about those uh, devices that they're using in their network. I mean, for example, if they are using uh, Juniper MX series, so you should study about that as well, so that when you get asked about in, about that in the interview, that, that have you ever worked with Juniper, you can easily tell them that I have worked with Juniper or I have studied Juniper and I know how how does Juniper work, or even if they are using Huawei or Cisco or any other vendor, so you can you can tell them that I have studied about it or I have got experience with these devices. So that's that's a big plus for. Uh, a service provider company that uh, if they want to hire you so they would know that you are familiar with the command line syntax as well so um, I think uh, that's all for today um, uh, I hope that this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing take care till next time goodbye